So apparently there's a controversy as to whether the scapula should move during a bench press. Why is there a controversy? Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. Well, happy Wednesday. And if, you, if it's Wednesday, you know what tomorrow is. Tomorrow's Thursday, so please join us at 6 a.m. for the uh, Coffee and Coaches Conference Call. We've had some great calls of late. Big groups, lots of great questions, uh, a lot of problems getting solved. So like I said, please join us for that. Okay, Wednesday's crunch day. Let's dig into the, the Q&A. And apparently there's a controversy in the fitness industry about how scapula should move. Um, during a bench press, so we're going to kind of tackle this. So this comes from Tarek, and Tarek says, I hope you're having a great year. Well, it, it's kind of early yet, but so far so good. Um, your Instagram, YouTube posts are absolutely game-changing. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but okay. And it contains some of the most amazing and cutting-edge information. Thank you for putting so much content out there. You are most welcome. Okay, so uh, he says, my question is with regards to bench press for the non-power lifter, as in people who just want to be able to use bench press for hypertrophy purposes and not necessarily to lift the most amount of weight, there's a lot of debate out there in the fitness industry as to whether the shoulder blade should be allowed to move during a bench press. What's your take on the scapular position, freedom in the bench press for the trainee looking uh, to use this for muscle hypertrophy? So that's his first question. We've got a second question that's gonna come up later in a, in a minute. So let's just kind of attack this thing. And so let's, let's talk about what we actually need as the stimulus for hypertrophy. Okay, so aside from like protein intake and, and, and stuff like that, what we have to actually be able to do is produce tension. So that's on the, the most simplified level. We have to be able to produce a progressively increasing level of tension to promote this hypertrophic stimulus. And so what we're talking about is a combination of, of load, muscle position, and then some element of time or volume. So we have to have sufficient volume as well. And so so what we want to be able to do then is, is we want to progress um, the, the amount of weight lifted over time to promote adaptation. So when we talk about muscle position, we're actually um, talking to, about the ability to concentrically orient the muscle per unit of effort. And so every time you go into the gym, um, you want to be able to recruit more muscle fibers. Um, and these muscle fibers have to be biased towards concentric orientation to produce tension because eccentrically oriented muscle fibers do not, do not produce tension. Um, and so we have to keep that in mind. So increased force production is, is one of those things that we're gonna need as a representation of this increased tension. And so what this does then is it increases the intramuscular, so the, 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 the pressure inside the muscle, the intramuscular pressure, and it increases the intrathoracic pressure. So that's the pressure inside of, of your rib cage. And so the, the best way to do this is to squeeze the thorax as tight as we can from both sides. And so we only have two sides in regards to, to the, our ability to squeeze the thorax, and that's the front and the back. There's no muscles on the sides that, that can actually do it. And so if we look at the representation here, you can see that I kind of drew what we would represent as some sort of average position of a thorax. So we're looking at the thorax in, in cross section here. So like if we sliced you right, right through here, and we're looking down on it. And so if we were gonna to try to increase and, and maximize pressure, what we would need to do is we would have to have a mechanism on the back side that squeezes from the back and mechanism on the front side. So thankfully the bench press does this quite well because we actually have a fixed bench that presses into our back. And so the more load that we use, the more pressure we're gonna get from the back side. The more, more weight we use, the more tension I can create through, through the front side, so, so through the pec. So I get this great high pressure, high tension, high forced squeeze. And so um, what I need then are, are the fixed scapula on the back side. So what that does is I take two bones, I compress it into the back of the thorax. It's very rigid, it doesn't allow expansion, and it helps me to increase the ability to compress the back side. By fixing the scapula then, as I produce force with the pecs, what the pecs are gonna do is they're gonna squeeze as well. And so they're gonna compress the front side back into the bench. So I get smushed front to back, I spread out side to side, and that's basically how we're gonna create this, this intrathoracic pressure. Now, if I was to allow the scapula to move, 
that what I would have, I, was, I would have an expansion on the backside of the thorax. I would, have, I would ha still be able to concentrically orient anteriorly, but the tension would be less because the intrathoracic pressure is much, much less. And so this is where your lower qualified lifters tend to be. It's like they can't produce the coordinative effect that is necessary to increase the intrathoracic pressure. So they don't recruit as much muscle fiber, they don't coordinate well, they don't create as much um, compression and therefore less tension, so they're not as strong, they don't have as much hypertrophy. But over time, what they do is they learn to coordinate these things and they get better and better and better over time. And so um, if you think about how a bench press shirt, this is exactly how a bench press shirt works. So a bench press shirt um, can't lift any weight. What it does is it magnifies the compressive strategy in the lifter. So the more weight that you put on the, on the shirt, the more compression, the more tension there is in the shirt, it squeezes me tighter. If I can ramp up that intrathoracic pressure, guess what? My force production goes up because intramuscular pressure goes up and that's how you produce force. Now, so Tarek has a second question and he says, um, is there a preferred way to do this? So he's talking about the this, this scapular position that can potentially reduce the compressive strategy associated with the down and back position that is generally advised for lifting the max amount of weight. So is there a better way to do this so we don't compress? Um, if the goal is hypertrophy, absolutely not. Um, increased compression is this mechanism that we need to continuously ramp up the amount of tension that we're producing in the muscle itself. Now, you can still train, you can still allow the scapula to move, but expect less in regard to the outcome per unit of effort. So you can still strategize exercise selection. So, so you know, if you, if you did a bench press, first in your, in your program, you can do other activities that are less compressive, that can promote some expansion and some, some reorientation. But ultimately what you're gonna do is we have to consider the, the strength of the stimulus. So what stimulus do you want to, to, to be um, prioritized based on the resources that are available? So if hypertrophy is the goal, then you're gonna eventually sacrifice something. And usually what it is, is you're gonna increase the compressive strategy, you're gonna lose range of motion over time, and, and so ultimately, um, again, it, it, it's the trade-off. You get to decide. So some people are satisfied with a certain degree of hypertrophy. They only need so much compressive strategy. They're only gonna lose so much range of motion. Um, so again, the more tension that you wanna produce, the more hypertrophy, just expect to give it up. Um, so there are exceptions to the rule. Okay, we have to accept this fact that there will be somebody out there that is genetically predisposed to carry a lot of muscle mass. They're really good shape changers so they can compress when they need to compress and they can expand when they need to expand. And so they're the exceptions to the rule. And these are the people that are probably trying to sell you a program that does a certain thing. So it's kind of like those people that, that promote the extreme flexibility programs or, or whatever. And they were gifted in having this extreme flex, flexibility capabilities so they can demonstrate it. And so they say, well, everybody should be able to do this. And, and I'm sorry, it just doesn't work that way. Um, so, you know, when, when mom said that you can be anything that you want to be, all you have to do is want it bad enough, she was lying to you to make you feel good and you can pick up your participation trophy on the way out. Um, so the only way that you're going to find out what you're genetically predisposed towards is to train. And so if there's something that you like to do, then you pursue it and then you monitor for change and you see what you're capable of. That's the best way to do it. So uh, Tarek, I hope that answers your question for you. Um, in, in, a, in a nutshell, if you wanna produce tension, you wanna produce hypertrophy, you wanna produce force, the scaps aren't gonna move during your bench press. Well, they're gonna move minimally, let's put it that way. Is that fair? Okay, if they move a lot, you're not gonna produce a lot of tension and you're gonna, you're gonna see a reduction in, in the outcome. So everybody have a great Wednesday. Um, I will see you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. on the Coffee and Coaches Conference call. Have a great day.